I have questions about the strength of the original hull. Um, it had a lot of cracks in the glass in these stringers. Now, I don't know whether that was from normal boating use or because the boat was full of water on the trailer for I don't know how many years. I mean, it was literally this deep with water or wet foam. Or pulling it across town <clears throat> on a trailer full of water or the demo or prying out the foam or prying out the gas tank. But it just seemed to have an awful lot of cracks. So I'm going to put it back a little stronger. Um, for this, this stringer where I save on this outside stringer where I saved the glass, I put another layer of chop mat and another layer of um, 19 ounce woven on top of that. And when we get finished, I'm going to put two layers or more of biaxial um, combo mat across the top. Now this side, which is new, I will have two layers of the 19 ounce plus the uh, chop mat. And on this layer, which is original, I'm going to again cover it with two more layers additionally of the heavy woven and the chop mat. In the interior surface, I'm going to put three layers of the woven woven with the chop mat. And additionally, this was a long span. It went from this back bulkhead all the way to the front of the fuel tank just like six feet with no support this stringer so I added try not to be too jerky I added these two mini bulkheads I'm gonna add another one right here where there was not one I'm replacing this and replacing this and replacing this one so by shortening up those spans should make it more stiff also in a perfect world, I think the stringer should be glassed 100% front to back before the bulkheads are put in. That way you have continuous strength through these, all these joints and there's a bunch of, bunch of joints that are potential weak spots. Um, but in my world, I couldn't do this because I didn't have all the, enough glass to do this in hand. It's been ordered and you know I don't want to wait I'm a very impatient guy so I started by just glassing behind the intersections of the little bulkheads and the stringers making sure I had some glass that ran through and this will be tied in later when I fully glass the stringers and it was a little extra trouble but I think well worth it I think uh, it adds strength to the boat I noticed the original stringers where these intersections were they had kind of cracked and opened up and it just looked like uh, could have been improved upon so that this is my effort on improving upon the original design. Template making for these little cross bulkheads are a pretty simple deal I just use sticks and clamps. Um, these didn't have to fit particularly well the ones where I'm putting the bulkhead inside the original glass they were a little more finicky and required a little more shaving and uh, sanding and stuff because the old glass is pretty crooked but like this one where it's going in a new spot it's a piece of cake just clamp some little boards together and transferred the marks onto the divina cell and i found that the divina cell cuts really easily with a little handsaw the handsaw just makes life a little more simpler no power cords and no power tools and um you can just keep uh, trimming right there in place in the boat. I don't have to climb in and out. So the handsaw is the way to go with this stuff as far as I'm concerned. I put in lots of these little drain pipes. Um, when the boat's finished and all these cavities are foam, they probably won't do any good. But during the construction phase, every time we get a little shower, it helps me out a lot. It makes uh, vacuuming out the water of the boat simpler. Where the bulkheads are replacing original bulkheads you've seen where I've glued the um, divina cell to the existing glass cleaned it up and uh, put in thick an epoxy or chop mat or whatever it takes to get it glued to the original fiberglass to hold it in place um, where I'm adding bulkheads there's nothing to glue it to and you can't really um, nail or screw this stuff so I mix up some thickened resin, put it on the edges and get it in place and um, my goal is to just have it hold the divina cell in place till this stuff dries then it will be rigid enough to apply some additional thickened resin and fill all the gaps in and put a nice um, 
concave joint so that when you're doing the fiberglass you're not trying to bend it at a right angle it doesn't really bend well at a right angle you end up with air pockets behind it so step one is just get the thing stuck in place with enough strength that you can push a trowel against it later on without it moving moving around okay just finished opening up the last four of the little mini bulkheads I'm calling them um, they need to dry I need to sand them and then I will install some Divinacel like I did on this one to bring it up to grade here I'm mixing up a batch of uh, the thickened resin or peanut butter they like to call it I use and I'm a fan of um, polyfiber that's the stuff in a bag it's uh, sold by Bitty Mold Supply B I T Y my wife has been using this stuff for years to thicken her rubber mold making chemicals or her to thicken her plastics it's just uh, looks like chopped up polyethylene poly poly rope um, chopped in a little bitty fibers I like it a lot better than all the other powders and thickeners it bulks up super fast and it's really cheap um, there's you get two bags like the one that's shown for less than 40 bucks so I'm a, officially a sponsor of this stuff so anyway you mix it with the resin until you get the consistency you want and then I use 1% no more than that of a hardener because it's so hot here where I am um, mix it up as well as possible and I've been watching this trick on the internet for a long time of putting the thickened resin in a plastic bag this is a sandwich bag cutting the corner off of the bag and squirting it out like a, like those cake decorator bags in order to get the thickened resin in the right spot with a minimal mess and it took me a while to pick this trick up but I'm using it now and it works uh, pretty well here I'm uh, putting in the thickened resin in the corners and this was before I got woke to the fact that the bag makes it so much easier I'm trying to use a trowel um, the resin is a little too wet it's making it more messy but even if you get to mix just right this is not the easiest way to do it so uh, now I'm going to do it with the bag and you can see the difference later clip and now I'm using the bag and I know you can't see much but it's the only clip I have but it puts the material more or less where it needs to be less of it falls on the floor less of it goes on my hand it's just a much better way to do it you can see there's the, the stuff is in the corner and all I need to do is clean it up and round it over and it's a done deal I've got the 14 I call them minor bulkheads installed that's the ones on the outside of the stringers the outside of the main stringers. Um, I have seven of them glassed totally. I'm running out of glass. I have some on order. And only six of these were original. So I've added uh, six from 14, eight. Is that right? One, two, three, four, yeah, I've added eight of them. Um, I think I'm getting a lot of strength for not a whole lot of extra weight. So I'm good with that. Now the bulkheads across the middle, these tall ones, obviously I'm going to have one at the rear of the fuel tank. That's kind of the main one. And I'll have one at the front of the fuel tank. And then I will have one somewhere underneath the console for mechanical stuff. And then we'll have a long run for a underfloor ice chest. And then there'll be one up at the front. Well, since I got the new bulkhead installed and it is fully tabbed on the other side, it's just partially tabbed on this side, I felt confident to take this bulkhead out. And this one was a beast because it was partially rotten but partially still pretty strong. I got it out and we'll let it dry. It still had weeping water coming out of it. We'll let it dry and I'll cut a Divinacel um, bulkhead in the morning. We'll start putting it back together. And I just got a call from my... Um, former employer who I ship heavy things to and he says my other roll of fabrics in so I gotta go get it and I got all my glass in and I got a little rack made for it and it makes the operation a little smoother um, this I got I think it's 10 yards or 5 yards this is the uh, 
the bias combo mat that I'm going over the top of the stringers with. It's supposed to be very flexible and it's still strong. This is just chopped mat. I got a whole roll. It's 110 pounds. And this is my go-to uh, Woven Roven 19 ounce that I use for strength and build up. So this is it. It's all on me now. Except I'm going to have to go get some more resin from New Orleans. But that's a good thing to do on a rainy day. Here I'm starting to cut the material for the main stringers. It's going to use it quite a bit. And I had to put a crank handle on the um, chop mat spool because if you pull on it it just tears it doesn't it's not strong enough to pull on that heavy roll and right below that you see all the little strips it looks like fish hanging out to dry that's the um, combo mat for the top of the stringers I got it all cut up and I don't have enough but I'll make do with something now that I have plenty of cloth and plenty of resin and lots of places to put it it's decided to rain every day so I'm going to prepare this bulkhead for the Venicel. That's, uh, that's this one. It's going to come up to this height. Uh, and then I could prepare the bulkhead for the um, Kusa board, I guess. I don't want to put these bulkheads in because I want to glass this surface of this stringer all the way before I put in the cross bulkheads. I think that makes it stronger for, for not much extra bang. So got my garb on, I got all my protection gear on. I'm going to start the nasty work of cutting out this uh, one side of this stringer. So I got a little plywood template for the back um, last bulkhead. It's not the last bulkhead, it's the furthest one back. And I could cut the divinus cell, but it's fixing the rain for two days, so I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. So I'll just bring the template in where it's safe. I'm buying the resin in the five gallon buckets, but they're entirely too heavy to mess with, like on the boat or whatever. So I decant into these orange juice bottles. And these are the best. Because they got an easy to hold on to snout. They got a big wide opening so it's easy to pour into and out of. And they're clear so you can see how much you have left in each one. And they have a nice top. It's big and it's a half a turn on and off. So when you get your hands all full of sticky, so it's, it's easy to handle these things. And my wife is kind enough to let me keep them in her studio where they are not quite so hot as they would be outside. Gives me longer working time. Anyway, I'm going through this stuff pretty fast. This is my third five gallon bucket, so. I'm going to have some rainy days coming up for the storm and I think I'll go back to New Orleans and get some more resin and go to the one boat scrapyard we have which is kind of pitiful and see if they don't have a leaning post that I might be able to use because that's something that I don't think I could build and make it look good. And by the way, I have a video on building this little bucket buddy. Uh, you can search for it and find it. Today should be a marathon fiberglassing day. I have this outside edge glued into place. I can take the little sticks down. So I'm going to glass it into place like I did this side. Uh, I can put the caps on all these stringers because they're glass on both sides and sanded. Finished up this little bit up front. I ran the two stringers up to the front and I put a ledger for the plywood and all that can be glassed. And glass, glass, and glassing, and it's cloudy because of the hurricane that's supposed to come that may come. So the weather's pretty pleasant. So I'm gonna get to mixing. Well, I'm gonna wipe down with acetone, get to mixing, and see if I can't get a little bit of video while I'm doing the work. So you can see I finally got my hands on a proper respirator. So with the proper filters in here. And well, with the proper filters on the respirator, everybody in my neighborhood can smell this stuff but me. That's awesome. And I got my little trusty box fan blowing next to me and just uh, take some of the um, tedium out of doing this fiberglass work. Um, this type of boat renovation is not for the faint of heart, it's a lot of work. So uh, don't get started on one if you're not good with uh, dealing with just plain old work. This 
back bulkhead glued into place, I can now officially throw away all of these bulky wooden clamps. They serve me well though. Venicell with no fiberglass. We did a lot of grinding this morning and I'm getting ready to lay this surface this surface and it's a big surface so I'm going to a big board roller and I got all this cleaned up but I don't have any plans on laying glass on it today it won't be long it looks a whole lot better without that rotten wood on there so yesterday I used the big boy roller a nine inch roller and it did in fact um, wet out the cloth faster of course it covers a lot more area but it was kind of wasteful too um, used up a lot of resin. It takes almost a quarter resin just to get the roller wet. And then when I went to clean it up at the end of the day it broke. So I'm back to my little roller that I'm kind of fond of. I've always used the blue um, gloves, the nitrile, nitril. I'm not sure how to say that. But uh, I guess COVID related they're pretty much unavailable around town. Every now and then you can find a box. So I've been using these little vinyl gloves that don't hold up very well I'm not a fan of them however once you start working and your hands get sweaty and you get super sticky you can drop these vinyl gloves and slide on another pair over sweaty hands and you cannot do that with the blue nitrile gloves you just can't freaking get them on once your hands get a little wet so in that regard I think I may be a convert to these uh, vinyl gloves at least when messing with this sticky stuff and this stuff can be maddening um, you start out with clean hands and then you place the cloth into place and you get a little bit of resin on your hands and then you get more resin on your hands and then you get more resin on your hands and then you try to grab your scissors to cut something but you can't let the roller go because the roller stuck to your hands and then you finally get the roller off your hands you get the scissors and then you can't get the scissors off your hands and then you try to pick up some cloth and you got strings hanging every which ways and you pull them off and then you can't get the strings off your hands it's just it's really a, if it if if you can keep it from getting under your skin it's kind of comical but uh that's just the way it is when you're laying this stuff but i got a lot laid and uh i'm getting seeing light at the end of the tunnel as far as these stringers go ladies and gentlemen the stringers are well not complete but almost they're complete enough so I can start working on the fuel tank and the transom. Um, all they lack is I want to double up the cap, the glass that I wrapped across the top, and I ran out. So it all has at least one layer, but some of it doesn't have two layers. So, man, pretty stoked here. Start messing with this fuel tank. It's ready to go in. Well, it's not ready to go in. I'm ready to figure out how to put it in. <laughs> 